Hello everybody, my name is Mike Plays, I'm Mike Evan Plays, whichever takes fancy, and welcome back to the sort of E3 recap I'm doing this year. Last year I sort of just basically played a game and then did it, but this year I'm actually just gonna do a little pre-recorded thing, just show some gameplay underneath of a random game. Um, so we're gonna be talking about the Microsoft cons, uh, conference today, or the Xbox briefing, whichever one they preferred to call it this year was a bit weird. Um, so they started off with the new Xbox they're bringing out the new Xbox One S and X, which are apparently the best ones in the world, but I kind of doubt that for some reason. I think the PS4, is, well the PlayStation is going to do something similar to it, but I'm not sure. It, it, they might do They might do something better next uh, this year, I don't know, I'm not sure. Uh, I thought it was going to be Project Scorpio, but clearly I was wrong. Uh, apparently Project Scorpio has like a chip or something inside the machine, which is a bit a bit weird to me. Um, then they showed off a bit of Forza, or well, Forza 7, which was, it was fine. They sort of also showed a car off as well, which I'm just going to put this little quote up here from uh, Jesse Cox's Twitter feed. Uh, it pretty much just explains, no, not really explains, but it kind of gives them a reason to put it up because I was incredibly confused why they brought a car on board. It was like, why are you bringing a car? To a gaming convention, it's a bit, a bit strange. Um, but then they showed off some actual race car drivers in the thing, so that was interesting. But it didn't really do that much for me because I wasn't really a big Forza fan. Uh, then they showed off a bit of Metro Exodia, I think he was, which is a sequel to the Metro series. Uh, that looks quite interesting. I kind of thought it was a bit Fallout if it was all in Russia, which basically it is. But I don't think I'll be playing it anytime soon. Um, it kind of looks alright, but the entire gameplay they showed was incredibly scripted and it didn't really show off anything that I kind of should. Well, it didn't really show off anything that was really something to jump out at me. Uh, after that, they showed off their uh, Assassin's Creed game, which was Assassin's Creed Egypt Edition or Origins, which basically just goes back to the beginning and the main characters of the last of the Magi or something like that. Uh, I'm kind of getting a bit sick of the Assassin's Creed series because it's just basically the same game. But then again, people can say that about the Mario series, but at least the Mario series actually does something with their franchises, as in it shows off what the console can do rather than just the Assassin's Creed, which is basically the same game but with a new coat of paint. Uh, then they had sort of players unknown Battleground on the Xbox One, which, if you don't know what that game is, it's basically a big twi uh, Twitch game that a lot of Twitch players play. I don't really find it interesting, it's not really my sort of game, so I doubt I'll be getting that one at all, and also I could just get it on the PC if I really wanted it that bad. Uh, then they've got two new indie games that they showed off, which was one called Deep Rock Galactica. Uh, it looked visually interesting. But the rest of the game kind of looked a bit bland. It was like you're a mining crew and then you've got to uh, sort of just dig away and then eventually shoot a bunch of aliens. I was kind of unimpressed with that. It looked a bit uh, a bit daft and a bit too boring. Same with the next game, which was State of Decay 2, uh, which also looked kind of boring compared to the or original one mainly because they look like the exact same game but slightly bigger which involved you going around a small town in America and basically picking up survivors and making a house so that you can sort of make a living but it had zombies in and I'm kinda sick of having zombies in video games uh, they also showed off something called the Darwin Project they didn't go too much into it, which he kind of did with every game. They didn't go too much into every every game. They just sort of showed a bit of a trailer and a bit of gameplay, and then that was it, and they moved on to the next game. Uh, but the Diamond Project kind of just looks like the Hunger Games if it was a video game. Uh, sort of like you have different characters with classes. Kind of like, uh, I'm thinking about it, it's just kind of like the whole Overwatch thing, but in Arena instead of like instead of like a 6v6 kind of thing. Uh, then they had Minecraft this year, which they usually show, except it was Minecraft on the 
sort of on the Xbox One, but I think they're doing a Minecraft on the Xbox One where you can play it with anyone with uh, any console, which would be quite interesting. So that would actually show that they can actually have crossplay between a Xbox player and a PlayStation 4 player, or Xbox player and a PC player kind of thing. I mean, that's bound to happen anyway. Uh, then they moved on to sort of games that they made, uh, that they sort of took, in quotation marks, took from the eastern side of the world, like Japan's and the Koreas and all that. They had a Dragon Ball Z fighter, which I'm looking forward to, but if you're not into Dragon Ball Z, then you probably won't really like it. They also showed off a uh, Black Desert, or Black Desert, which is an MMO that was a Korean MMO, which just involved a lot of shouting and big blasting attacks. Uh, sort of stuff you can't really do until you're at least level 50 to 60 or the max level or whatever it'll be. Uh, they also had another one which looked really interesting. It was a pixelated game that was kind of in a Blade Runner-esque uh, setting uh, called The Last Night, I think it was. It was The Last Night or The Last Light. I think it's one of these your main character is going to basically be sort of living in a world where shit's gone down and you have to sort of find out who the murderer is or something like that. It's all very dark and gritty. Uh, then they deliver in the game, they shoot off. I think these were all the from the Eastern ones. I don't know. It, it, they kind of meshed it all together, so I didn't really... It kind of meshed it all together, so I wasn't really sure if these two indie games that were in it were from Korea or just they happened to be Korea... Uh, Eastern-esque, not Korean-esque, I apologize. Uh, they had an Artful Escape one, which looked alright. It looked very colourful. It kind of reminded me a tiny bit of uh, Rayman Legends with the whole sort of singing level, uh, where you're basically running and hitting people at the time of a beat kind of thing. Then the last thing they showed, which was a very short teaser for something called Code Vine, or Code Veen. I don't know, it reminded me of uh, another game that the... Koreans or Japanese came out with which involved a character called 2B. I can't remember for the life of me what that game is called but I'm definitely going to be putting it up in the video now. Uh, yeah, it reminded me it's basically like a spiritual sequel to that one or the same people who made that one made this one as well. So after all the end of the Eastern type of games they went back to the games that were going to be shown uh, after the games that were going to be sort of made here in the United States. Uh, not here but yeah. Uh, well, one of them was The Sea of Thieves, which looked like a very interesting pirate game. I was quite interested in it. It looked very unique, and it actually kind of made me feel like I actually want to get this game. Maybe not that it wasn't really the big push to get me to get an Xbox, but if I did have an Xbox, then yes, I would probably get that game because it looks quite interesting. And the only downside is I don't have many friends to play it with. Uh, but who knows? Maybe I'll make some friends by playing it. There's also something called uh, Takamo. It was a bit of an indie title, but it kind of reminded me a bit of the Limbo Limbo, and... What was it called? Uh, I can't remember the name. Uh, it was like the other series that Limbo made. I'm going to put up another picture of what it was. One where you're like a little boy and you're running away from things. I can't remember what that one's called, but it looked from the same people as those, apart from it had people talking in it. Which was a bit weird, so that might not be those. Uh, then they had something that wasn't... I wasn't really expecting from it. At first, when I saw it, there was a little orange character running around. And I was like, oh look, it's Conker. But no, it turned out to be a completely new IP called Super Lucky's Tale. Which was a sort of 3D-esque platformer. And it kind of felt a bit weird having it there. Uh, it... Just sort of felt a bit, why is this game here? It feels like it shouldn't be here. Uh, and then after that they showed off a bit of Cuphead, which was just basically giving it a release date from, uh, let me think, it was a release date from October to September now. So that's been delayed. Uh, then after that they had a bit of a trailer for Crackdown 3. Uh, it just basically premiered. It looks... Very interesting, it looks kind of like the old one, uh, but it also looks a bit like Saints Row 4, one where you basically hack the world and you can basically just do all the super stuff like jumping several thousand feet in the air and throwing cars 
miles away and all that epic stuff. Uh, there, there were just a bunch of mini trailers for indie games. I didn't. It looked interesting, but there wasn't anything. It went to bag a bit too quick, so I couldn't really pick out anything that I was particularly going to be drawn to. Uh, then, let's see. Then they had Ashen. Oh, no, Ashen was the uh, Ashen was the Limbo type game. I think Te Tecmo was something completely different, uh, but it looked really weird anyway. Uh, then they had a prequel for the super emotional game, Life is Strange. Originally I thought it was a sequel, because she was wearing like, because the main character was wearing black and stuff, and I thought she was basically being in her goth phase, but no, it was literally just a prequel to the entire game. Then we also had, let's see on my notes here, uh, they had Shadow of Mordor 2, which I think was called uh, just a war, of, or just Shadow of War or something. It looks alright. I didn't play the first one, so I don't really have that many opinions on it. Uh, the whole taking over units thing and making them your slave or your own army was quite interesting, I will admit. The only thing that was a bit weird, though, was all the sort of monsters in the game had a bit of a Cockney accent, so it was a bit weird listening to those people talking like they were basically being slaves. It was kind of weird. Uh, and then suddenly... A piano was on stage, and it basically played a bit for Ori in the Black Forest 2, which actually sounded quite nice, and uh, I may, I said may, be doing a little let's play of Ori in the Black Forest, because of that game, because, well, because of that little piano thing, because it actually made me think, huh, I actually like the soundtrack to this, so I might actually do a little game of it. Um, then... Xbox release uh, is going to be releasing a virtual console type deal for the original Xbox games, which seems pretty cool because then people can actually play their old games and do all that stuff. Uh, I don't think I'll be getting it because I didn't really play an Xbox when I was a kid, so I don't know any of the original games apart from the only game I know is Halo, and I haven't really got any of the other Halo games. Uh, lastly, they showed Anthem. Which originally I thought was going to be Elder Scrolls in Space, but that might be in the Bethesda one. But we'll get to that at the end. Um, it looked okay, but it was a very scripted uh, sort of trailer, so I wasn't very impressed. And also the way they got into the suits was kind of unrealistic. It was a bit weird. They sort of put their legs into the machine, but it kind of felt like they were going to break their legs if they put it in, or they were going to fall over and stuff. It was a bit weird. It looks okay, but it looks just basically like Destiny rather than anything else. Uh, and that was it. That was pretty much it for the uh, entire Microsoft uh, Xbox conference thing, whichever you want to call it. Um, the next one I'll be watching will be the Ubisoft one, I believe. I think that's coming out today. Uh, or if it's not today, it's either tomorrow or something like that. I'll be doing a, another video like this for the Ubisoft one, except it'll be a different game you're watching rather than whatever I've put on now. Uh, I'm not going to do a Bethesda one because I missed the Bethesda one, and I'm just going to watch a couple of people briefing on that instead. Uh, but till then guys, thank you very much for watching. Leave your comments in this uh, comment section below and tell me what you think of this video, if you like it like this, or you like it like me playing a game and actually talking over it. Uh, either way, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. So I'll see you guys then.